don't have much to tell you about your second question because we it's not been long since we've been accredited. But regarding your first question, to be honest, uh, I set up two advisory groups for the formality sake because everyone we need to have a lot of participants in developing strategic plans and so on. But it turned out to be the best thing we did. Uh, we could we could hear some opinions here and there on an individual basis, but in systematic way, we were able to get uh, a lot of valuable <coughs> advices and comments uh, regarding our curricula or our uh, uh, performance of our graduates. <coughs> so it turned out to be the best thing. And we really worked very hard on uh, working with these advisory groups. And our peer review team uh, was very much impressed with our <laughs> alumni participants. OK. OK. Um, when we went through the initial accreditation, uh, I had a mock visit, which is something that used to be very uh, commonly recommended. And in that visit, uh, one of the individuals uh, suggested that I have an advisory group. And to be honest, my previous schools, the advisory groups weren't very effective. I attended the advisory council workshop at HSB, learned some things about how to manage one, and uh, we would say that if you uh, have a group and manage it well, they can be exceptionally valuable in the strategic planning process. Example, in, in my uh, situation, we had a proposal uh, to do a program, I won't get into details, but we were talking about a quarter to half a million dollar investment. And the advisory council, uh, by the time we get through with their questions and answers, we realized that that was an idea for the faculty, but was not going to go anywhere in the business community. And so that saved me as dean in the school making a really stupid mistake. Um, so that was obviously some feedback from the planning. But also, uh, as, as uh, um, Dean Fellows pointed out, the feedback as to how well the students are doing, uh, the recent grads, the alumni, excuse me, uh, advisory council, those individuals will be very candid. And that's very valuable because they'll tell you that, hey, they know this, but they have trouble with that. And they take a, a personal attention. So that's something that we would uh, encourage you to do regardless whether you are or are not accredited is to have a good advisory council. Questions? University, uh, thank you very much to the panel. I'd like to ask a question about money and resources. Um, a sense of, uh, if the panel can uh, help me understand something of the, uh, the, and from the project being an initial thought or an idea to its completion, what dollar value was put aside? How was the budget justified? If it, if, was it a percentage of your of your money? Is some sense of what, were there uh, senior faculty that were uh, allocated to drive this process? Was it a full time role for them? Was there administrative support? So a sense of the amount of investment that uh, you have to argue for, uh, for di from different bodies in the university. About initial accreditation, I'm the last one to ask because I haven't really been through it. Okay. Yeah. You're asking about the cost of initial accreditation. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share some uh, ideas, but I don't think I'm going to share it in, in dollar values okay. because different schools in different countries, the, the, the salary are uh, quite quite different. Uh, for example, uh, in our case, uh, uh, starting our initial accreditation up to now, we have hired 20 more faculty members. So uh, we used to have only around 80 faculty members. Right now, we have about 100. So 25% uh, more. And different schools or uh, different countries that uh, have different uh, <coughs> salary systems. So you know, uh, I, I don't know the situation in, in, in Australia. 
And uh, as to the budget, uh, it has been quite different since uh, we started to uh, form a committee to to go for ACSB accreditation. I think the budget has been uh, increased by 30 to 40 percent. Uh, I mean, other than uh, the, the, the salary for the faculties, and, and, and those those are mainly operating uh, for like you know traveling uh, those kind of uh, uh, budgets. And but not many of them are from uh, from the university. Uh, we try to get uh, grants uh, from the government. Like I have mentioned, you know, we uh, we got a three year grant from the government uh, trying to get the ACSB accreditation. And the majority of those money are from our alumni. Uh, our alumni uh, are very supportive of, of the ACSB accreditation. And so lots of money are from the alumni. Uh, I remember, uh, let me share you with one short story. I, two years ago, I, I went to visit uh, one of our alumni uh, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, after I talked to him, for about 10 minutes, he started to complain about lots of things. He said, you are not doing a good job, you know. So I was very upset. I said, wow, well, why do I need to uh, spend that much time visit him, you know, by flying like 15 hours or something like that, you know, drive two hours to visit him in LA. But I still, I was still in the U.S. I got a phone call from uh, the school. Saying that, saying that guy donated one million U.S. dollars, you know, to our college. So sometimes, you know, it's really hard to predict, you know, whether it's worth the efforts to visit the phenomenon. And um, the other part could be like traveling, you know, uh, because uh, you need to attend <coughs> seminars, uh, annual conference, like Joe has mentioned. You know? So every year we we uh, spend lots of time and money uh, to uh, join those uh, conference, you know. And uh, of course, we all, I also have mentioned we uh, provide lots of uh, research incentives, uh, like you know, reduce the teaching load. Uh, we try to come up with some uh, plans, and if you got some uh, uh, very good uh, research publications, or you got uh, a research grants from the government, from uh, uh, private companies, you can waive the teaching load. Also, things you know, of course. Uh, uh, it's really hard to, to measure the actual monetary uh, inputs. But basically these are, uh, 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 of course, then there are some other uh, efforts you cannot measure, you know. Like, you know, uh, the, the staff members, they have to overtime uh, without pay, you know. Uh, the faculty members have to spend lots of time, you know, other than their teaching, uh, research, you know, we, we ask them to uh, spend time in, in those focus areas like service learning, you know, uh, social enterprises. Uh, that, that's basically, you know, uh, uh, my, my, my answer to this question. But still, I think it, it's worth the efforts, you know. Uh, with the, the, the international uh, uh, linkage we got, you know, uh, uh, quality education, you know, for the students, um, the, the the, the staff, the, the faculty members, they have the mindset that you know we need to uh, uh, keep working on uh, things, continuous improvement. Yeah, so that's that's basically my answer to your question.